Good morning, Northwoods Baptist Church. Thank you for joining me for day 18 of our 40 days in prayer. This morning we're going to be reading Psalm 119, verse number 64. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. In remembering God, the psalmist was rejoicing that no matter what had happened, no matter what his lost, that God was faithful. God was there for him. And he sees a very clear fact here in verse 64. The clear fact he sees is the earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. We see the, the fact that he discovers is he discovers the mercy of God. He remembers God's mercy. If we look around the nature and we look around the natural world, nature doesn't teach us God's mercy. Now we can see God's hand. We can see his glory in the heavens and in the sky. We can see his his engineering and his creativity in creation. I think about his creativity that's seen in the duck-billed platypus. Um, however, there's not a lot of mercy whenever you look in the um, in out into nature. You see the lion chasing down the gazelle. The lion doesn't show a lot of mercy for its prey. You think of someone that's climbing, climbing whether it be a, a large tree or climbing a cliff, and they slip and fall. Mercy, do, nature doesn't show a lot of mercy. Gravity takes effect, and gravity is going to happen no matter what takes place. However, someone has been redeemed, a child of God can see the mercies of God everywhere. We can see the mercies of God all around us. Uh, History is littered with pictures of God's mercy uh, that's available for all of us to see. Remember back in the Garden of Eden, the mercy of God slain the lamb, and he provided a coat to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve. It was the mercy of God that was seen in the life of Cain that branded him instead of burying him. You see, the mercy of God working um, in his waiting to send the flood. He waited over 1,500 years before he sent the flood that was coming. In fact, um, the person who was promised to come, that whenever he ends, um, it will come, was Methuselah, the oldest man alive. It was a picture of God's mercy, uh, the mercy that was waiting for the flood to come to take place. And not only did he send God's mercy in waiting, he sent God's he sent his mercy in the form of the ark and allowing Noah to stand and preach that the ark was the way of salvation for over a hundred years. Then after the ark and after the flood, those that were on the ark, Noah and his family, as they walked out, God set his bow in the sky, which was a sign of God's mercy to never flood the earth completely and totally again. God's mercy was seen in Abraham's life when Abraham backslid into Egypt and he came back out. Whenever God, uh, whenever Abraham rebelled against God and went into Hagar and tried to manipulate plans to be his own way, he and Sarah did, you know, God was still merciful to Abraham. God was merciful to Lot. Whenever he fell and he was he was captured with the king of Sodom, God brought sent Abraham to rescue him out. When Sodom was about to be destroyed, God was merciful to send in people to pull him out of the city of Sodom and out of the area of Gomorrah. Uh, so before the fire and brimstone came and destroyed that area, Lot was saved. God showed his mercy to Jacob, a Jehovah of Beth- Bethel. God showed his mercy over and over and over. Now one commentator put it this way, in mercy, God held back. Um, mercy held back God's wrath from the human race when they hammered his son on the cross. That picture of the cross. I know that some people view that picture of a cross and saying that it's a picture of infamy. It's a picture of death. It's a picture of heartache. Uh, yes, it is. It truly is a picture of pain and suffering. Oh, but for us that know him, it's a picture of salvation. The price that was paid for our salvation. A reminder of God's mercy for us. Just to think about the fact that it was God's mercy that extended the day of grace to now over 2,000 millennia, or sorry, two millennia, it's extended to us. We have seen in our own lives thousands and thousands of times in our life when God's mercy has shown itself real. Um, Thousands of thousands of times whenever we have sinned. If we were to think about the number and the nature and the nastiness of our sin, of our decisions, of the punishment that was awaiting, and if we received justly what we dese- what we received, God has been so merciful. The psalmist says in another psalm, it's of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. This psalmist remembered the mercy of the Lord, that the whole uh, that the Lord is full, the earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. He saw God's mercy everywhere, and he rejoiced in it. But not only did he just discover God's mercy, um, he, it caused him to desire something. In seeing God's mercy, he desired, notice what he says, teach me thy statutes. He wanted to teach and wanted to know the statutes of God. One commentator put it this way, it was uh, John Phelps. He said, um, grace 
unstinted must be followed by growth unstunted. That's a great statement. Grace unstinted. God gave us grace without any measure or means and without end. It should be followed by growth unstunted. Our growth for him shouldn't be stunted or stopped or slowed down for any reasons. God's mercy must be the foundation of our life. Whenever his mercy is the foundation of our life, we will desire the truth that we see as a result of that mercy. Life under God's mercy is always shaped by the truth of God. I'm so thankful for that mercy. Knowing and recognizing the mercy that God extends to us. Do you desire to be be taught by the statutes of God? Do you desire God's word to teach you? And as I begin to look at this whole passage, this whole passage that he talks about and deals with loss, lust, loss, and being robbed, and the heartache and the difficulty, it comes down to this. He sees God's mercy even in the midst of loss. And he says, God, I want to be taught by you. Tomorrow in the next section, we're only going to look at a few verses through the next section. Um, but if you take time throughout the course of the day to look up and to read the words to the song, It Is Well With My Soul, it ties really well into this next passage. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for tuning in and being with us today. I do ask that you'll stop and pray for our city. I've been reading some of the news reports and news articles of what's been going on in our city. And um, we want to just pray for the lost souls in our town. Pray for those that are around that we see on a regular basis. Pray for that God will give you a burden for the lost. Um, Jesus says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Pray that God will send someone, that God will send people uh, to the lost in the city of Bemidji. Perhaps as we start to pray for God to send someone in the middle of and going to Bemidji, that God would touch on your heart. There's some people that I need to tell about him. So let's pray for our city. Let's pray for our leaders. Let's pray, pray for our police officers. Let's pray for God's grace on our city, on the city of Bemidji. Thank you so much for tuning in and being part of today. God bless you. We look forward to having a wonderful day tomorrow. Uh, Tomorrow will be the mother-daughter banquet, so please be in prayer for that. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.